Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Srini here. And today we're going to learn on the next video that is the loops in JavaScript. So if you're new to this channel, please do consider subscribing to it and hit the bell icon to get notifications for such more useful videos. So let's get started with today's topic. So we're going to look at loops in JavaScript. So far, what we have seen is just a very basic of how we are going to write a JavaScript program. And we looked at in the previous session, how what are the different types of variables in JavaScript? And how do we write comments in JavaScript? So today, let's continue once on that. Yeah, so this is what we have so far. I'll be creating a new file. And let me call that file as loops. Okay. And I would like to mention one more point here that you can also write multi-line comment. You can write the multi-line comments in this manner. This is again, same as Java, Java, what we do in Java programming language. So you can say this is multi-line comment, right? Okay, and you can spread it over. So you can just have this comment across multiple lines. So it's not going to give you any error if you enclose it within your, this kind of a symbol, right? Now, what we are going to do is that uh, we are going to look at one more type of comment that we are going to write as this way. This is called functional documentation or it's called as documentation comment. Documentation comment. That means whenever you write certain piece of code, let's say for example, a method or any kind of such kind of a code and you want to mention, let's say who is the author, right? Who is the author and what is the date when this particular code was written and the purpose why was this particular method being written, et cetera. So those all things we can also write with this documentation comment. And it is really useful during code reviews as well as whenever any new team member joins the team, they would be able to get a feel and understanding about what this framework is doing and what are the different pieces of code being supposed to do, right? Okay, so let's start understanding what is loops. Okay, so let's take a example of variable. Let's take a variable as, v1 equal to 10. Okay. And let's take another variable v2 equal to 20. It's a very simple piece of code, which I'm going to write. Okay. You will be definitely able to understand it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare. So how do we compare two variables? We can compare two variables with the help of certain operator. So we will come to that operators in depth later on. I mean, in the next session, but just to give an example of how to work with the looping and the conditions, right? I just wanted to introduce this plus operator here. So it's fairly simple to understand. So plus means greater than. Okay. So what am I saying here? Is 10 greater than 20? If so, then you need to print console.log and we can say v1 is greater than v2, right? And I can just put a semicolon here. If not, then I can just put it inside the else block. So we are going to start with very simple looping constructs. That is if else, so I'm going to put this particular statement now inside the else block. And I'm going to say here, else v2 is greater than v1. Okay, that's all what we need to understand from this piece of code. We have declared two variables initialized at the same time. We are doing a check of which is greater than each other, right? If v1 is found to be greater than v2, we are printing this one. Otherwise we're printing v2 is greater than v1. So let's run this program. So again, I'm going to go by the same way, just that I have to change the name of my file from this to loops.js. And we can see the expected output is returned. V2 is greater than V1 because 20 is greater than 10. Now there is a shortcut way, which I would want you all to just get accustomed to. Rather than directly executing this command from terminal, I can also download this extension called run code. Do you see this option here, run code? If I click on it, I have got the output. So it's just running it. Let's run one more time. Yeah. So we have got the output directly as we expected. Now, how do we get this symbol returned or in our ID, reflected in the ID? You just have to go to extensions tab and you need to search for this run code. Okay. So this is the one actually code runner, right? This is the particular one which you would want to install in your in your uh, Visual Studio. Just say code runner. And since I've already installed it, I don't see the install option, but you can install it and restart the Visual Studio. And you would be able to see this icon being shown to you. And it really saves a lot of your time, right? And yeah, that's pretty much it, which I wanted to cover in this particular session, fairly short and simple. 
So stay tuned for my next video. It will be for the continuation of the JavaScript basics. Thank you so much for watching. Please do subscribe my channel if you have not done yet. Thank you so much. Have a nice day.